I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. I got a radio show. Just trying to give God some back. Just some back of what he even gave me. Just a portion, you know, just. I'm just trying, man, to, to, to show some type of gratitude for all his blessings. I'm just trying to. Man, just just get it right sometimes. You know what I mean? I mean, man, you just can't do what you want to do and just live wrong all the time. Man, you got to, at one point in time, Steve, come on, man. Come on, man, you could do better. I know you can. You know, and, and, and you know what I had to do? I had to stop saying, I'm going to try to do better. And I just had to say, hey, man, I'm going to do better. You know, uh, tr- trying is just to put forth an effort, and then if it don't work, well, okay. But if you make up in your mind that I'm going to do something, then trying isn't enough. It's getting it done is the only thing that matters. See, it's the difference between doing and trying. We're going to try to win the game or we're going to go out here to win the game. Now, trying to win the game means that you could lose. But when you got in your mind made up, most athletes will tell you that they go out there with the full intent and purpose of winning and winning only. See, they don't put the second place finisher on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Second place don't get you there. You you got to win. And now take it out of the scope of athletics, but keep it in that type of type of analogy. In life, man, you just want to you want to win in life, don't you? I mean, at the end of the day, don't you want to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated of life? Don't you want to be recognized for your hard work? Don't you want you know, to be recognized within the bonus structure down at your job? Don't you want to have your plaque up on the wall down at your job? I mean, most people do. Some people could care less. Some people don't care about looking good or being their best. And that's cool, but I ain't talking to them, though. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to those of you who who, who want to be the best you can be. You know, people, people kill me when they get mad at, at, at people. And hey, he brown nose and he all up on the employee of the month. Man, the dude doing his job to the best of his ability and he getting recognized for it. What that got to do with all that you talking about? Because you ain't up there. You know, it's amazing, man, how people describe other people's success. He's so lucky. Lucky? Hey, man, don't they kind of get you a little bit when people call you lucky? When, let me tell you what luck really is, y'all. Luck is when hard work bumps up into opportunity. Some people call that luck. But hold on. Let's, let's think about this. If you wasn't working hard, an opportunity presented itself, what would you call that? But see, when you've been working hard, 
an opportunity presents itself and it bumps up into each other. Now people want to call that luck. But hold up, here go the part, though, that they ain't paying no attention to. Yeah, that opportunity came by. But if you had not been working hard and the hard work had not ran up in the opportunity, what would you have? No, sir, it's not luck. It's work. It is work. Because there's a scripture that says faith without works is dead. But my mama was a Sunday school teacher. She taught me enough, though. Now, I know the difference between right and wrong just like you do. You ain't got to, you know, it, it kills me when people write a strawberry letter. Am I wrong for this? You know, good and well, look at, let's read your letter. Are you wrong for this? You know, you wrong, but you don't need us to be telling, you know, but I'm going to do this anyway. Well, see, go ahead, though. Do what you want to do. But you know what, y'all? Here's the best advice I can give you. This is what I really uh, came to talk about this morning, but I got sidetracked because I listened. Get out of your own way. So many of us are blocking our own blessings. We're just in our own way. We are in our own way. And one of the most dangerous ways you can get in your way is to do it your way, to get it figured your way, and to lock in on your way, and this the way it's got to go. Do you know how many people are blocking their blessing? Do you know how long I blocked mine with that mindset right there? Look, because it's the way you do it, you think that make it the right way? You think just because you done thought on it long and hard, and that's what you really want. Do you really think that your way is the right way, or could there be a better way? See, until I started listening to God and started paying attention to his way, man, I was spinning my wheels, man. I was out here so determined this is how I was going to do it. But, you know, I had to learn how to get out of my own way because just because I could do it my way didn't mean it was the right way. I had to get out of my own way. Just get out your way, man. Now, wh- wh- what, what does that mean? That means, see, set your goals. That means have your dreams. That's, I'm, I'm saying set your goals, man. I ain't saying don't set goals. Listen to me. Set your goals. What is it you want to happen? What is it you'd like to have? What is it you'd like to be? What do you aspire to? Set your goals and set your dreams. Now, take your goals and your dreams to God and ask God to show you how. Man, you can save yourself a lot of pain. Listen to somebody who did it his way for so long. And when I finally got out of my way, out of my own way, when you've heard old people say, let go and let God, you've heard them say that. I didn't didn't get it. But I got it now. Let go and let God. And it's an amazing little saying, though. Now, you know, you may not get it now. It it took me a bunch of years to get it, too. But when I took my goals and my dreams and my vision to God, and I said, God, this is what I hope for. This is what I aspire to. This is what I want to be. This is where I would love to get to. Then I said, help me. Show me how. Point me in the right direction. Let me follow your footsteps. Guide me. Hey, give me a, a spirit of discernment. Show me who wrong. Because I meet people every day, ain't up to no good with me. Every single day. Oh, man. Man, I can't believe I run up into you, man. The Lord told me something was going to happen to me today. Well, see, I talk to him every day. He did not mention you to me. He, he ain't said nothing to me. He didn't tell me what was going to happen in my Now, that don't mean it can't happen. Because I'm open to it. So, really, man. I'm, I'm and, I, and, I, and and please know I'm listening as well as I've ever listened before. But but get yourself together though. See, know your goals and your dreams, and then let God show you how to do it. He'll do it. You know, it's so important, everybody, that you get focused, that you aim for something, that you dream of something, that you aspire to something. But it's the most, the best thing you can do after you do all that. Man, get God involved in it, man. Talk to him. I mean, why would you not? What you got to lose? You ain't got to go down there and make no big scene and and run laps around the church and run up there and throw yourself on the altar and scream and flip over and throw money in the air. You ain't got to do that. This you and God, man. This you and God. You know, you got to serve and praise him the way you do it. You got to let nobody else tell you how it's done. It's a personal relationship. People kill me if you don't do it this way. If you don't come here to this church and you don't run around in this circle and you don't get flipped in the air and you don't... Hey, man, you better go have a relationship with God, see what that's about. You understand? Don't nobody throw you off with all that, all right? All right, y'all, talk to him. He'd love to hear from you today.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, the Steve Harvey Morning Show is in full effect right now. My name is Steve Harvey. The following people are my compadres. Shirley Strawberry. Good morning, Steve. Carla Farrell. Good morning, Steve. The little uh, Junior Kill Spates. Oh. Morning, Unc. Yes, I am. Small in stature. Oh, I thought you were. It's meant. okay. Don't worry. I'm about to announce Nephew Tommy. <laughs> 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 Just got right tall. I'm right here. Toronto! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. they're up to one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. boy. Well, they're, at least they're not being swept by Golden State, right? No, they're controlling mm-hmm. things. Yeah, I like them, uh-huh. the underdog. I, yeah. I like mm-hmm. 123-109, baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, better not nobody come back. Yeah. I don't, you know, <laughs> I can I be honest with you? I'm so not interested in these finals. It's not really an interesting finals. It's not. It's not. It's, it's interesting, interesting to me. I'm digging it. Why? For what? Because because I think Golden State gonna lose. That's what it is. That's it's interesting to me. They're finna go down. It's possible. I don't care who ain't playing. I don't care who playing. I just want to see the W, and I want it to belong to Toronto. Yeah. I've never heard you say that, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a light skinned you know, you know, supporter. Mm. Wow. You know. And then Drake know. over there. You know. It's, you you it's, think Golden State gonna play this whole series and Durant ain't coming back? I don't know, but he better hear it. <laughs> Better be back Friday. He better hear it. Better be back Friday. Okay. Well, Junior, well come on. He said a wheelchair. He gonna play Friday. Come he'll on, play Friday. Dog, they gonna get somebody in this game. Dog, they all. Yeah. Okay. Well, come on, cause look at here. I'm telling you right now, Toronto got their game face on. They not playing. Yeah. Yeah. You'd like to go? With who's winning now, though? No. 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 No, Golden State beat the heck, no, beat the heck out of no, my no, Rockets. Because um, when the Rockets was winning, you was with the Rockets when they went. I knew we were not going to be I'm Golden from State. Houston, fool. I am too, and I had enough sense to know. Oh, here we go now. Not, that's why you're not pulling for Golden State, exactly. though. Exactly. Yeah, that's not. Golden State yeah. Come on. Beat the Rockets. Exactly. No, yeah, I'm just, that's what I like. No, I'm I just a realist. I want somebody to beat the team that beat the my Rockets, team. yeah. Oh, oh, that's oh, where okay. the, that's that, what I knew that's about. what it was. No. Don't it make sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no, no, none no, of this no. argument makes no. sense. No, it don't. Come no. on. Cause y'all, you think Wait, you gonna... think they're gonna see NBA final and Durant ain't coming back. You crazy. Okay. What he, we gonna say? He'll be back Friday. Him and Clay. Uh-oh. I talked to Durant's barber. <laughs> and he said <laughs> I uh, just wanted to distinguish Katie. That was nephew time. You are <laughs> stupid. Hey man, y'all gonna quit talking about that brother hair on this show now. That's what y'all not, gonna do. Oh no, no that's what not. he gonna do. We gonna keep talking about till he cut it, till he edge it up. See, why are you gonna yes. aggravate the man? Because his hair aggravated. <laughs> I know aggravated hair when I see like it. Y'all don't see aggravated hair when y'all see him. All y'all see is threes and jumpers and dunks. Y'all don't see aggravated hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I see 43 mm-hmm. and 35 and 39 and 29. All right, well, bet listen. You, bet you don't see it, Fred. When we come back, mm-hmm. Father's Day is right around the corner, guys. And so Steve is going to talk about Father's Day gifts, do's, and don'ts. We'll get to that at 32 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Father's Day is sneaking up on us again, and June 16th will be here before we know it, Steve. So uh, how would you guys like to spend your Father's Day? Um, and, and Steve, what are, your fa- what are your Father's Day's <laughs> gifts, do's, and don'ts? All well, right. my Father's Day will be at the mentoring camp with the boys who don't have fathers. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's good. Which, Which is so back, commendable. Steve. So hey, commendable. Man, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. I like that. And my kids sacrifice that day because they understand, because they get me all year long, so they ain't got no problem with it. How unselfish so, of them. Oh, that's that's what I yeah. do for Father's uh-huh. Day, just like mm-hmm. I am every Father's Day. Now, what's your next question? Well, uh, oh, go ahead, Tommy. You had yeah, something. from a father to another father. How do you handle your kids taking you out to dinner, but then you got to pay the doggone bill? How do you handle that right there? Mm. I don't really... Uh, Oh, you, well, your kids are young. Yeah, and they don't have jobs. They yeah. got to get the money from you. So they're not really <laughs> taking you out to dinner. We just going to eat. That's how yeah, you're just going to eat, and it's your day. There'll be plenty of room in the restaurant. Don't yeah. worry. 
Yeah, and don't worry. After why you y'all, fake why your death, so pretty. It's yeah, a, after you fake your death, Tommy, you don't have to worry no about Father's this anymore. Y'all know Father's Day ain't nothing to y'all. <laughs> Quit playing with us, boy. Well, no. I mean, Father's I want Day. it to be something for you. You get. You, you can go to any restaurant, get a table. <laughs> it's not respected. <laughs> well, Tommy, because you guys don't carry the children. Well, Tommy, that's is that right. a bonding day for and you that, and Jordan that's okay. on that day? We bond every day. I mean, you, I have to say you're a great father. I've I mean, always said that to you. Day. You're a really yeah. great father. You That's really my are. little dude right yeah. there. No, I'm just asking. Day. Both of y'all in them high chairs? Oh, boy. Oh, I thought that's some great bonding. <laughs> he get his seat, you get yours. So what? When you come to the house, I'm going to have him just baptize you in the hot tub. That's what I'm going to do. All right, so, Steve, what about this? I mean, you know, we're talking about you're saying Father's Day doesn't get the respect, say, that Mother's Day no, gets. it doesn't. But what about the gifts? What, what are some do's and don'ts as far as gifts are concerned? Do get him something he won't. Like what? Okay, like a person Ask like him. you, you have Ask everything. Ask him. Okay, then. What do you want? Okay, so they can't get what I want. Mm-hmm. And what is that? What is that? Play. I like a, a new airplane. Oh, <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> they can't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. you were right. You were right when you Tommy said that. So now that they're not going to give me what I want, then, uh-huh. you know. <laughs> <laughs> what don't but, you want? But do you know it's... You you know people look at you and I don't you, want because you have tie. everything. Yeah, I don't okay, want. Okay, no sure. Let me break that down. You don't yes, want another tie. Oh God, I gotta take my tie back. Why not? <laughs> What's wrong with ties? You, you dress so well. You love yeah, ties. I have plenty of ties. Oh, I don't okay. need another. Okay, what about this? Socks and underwear. Don't do that. Why? What's wrong with that? Because you won't even know if I got them on. <laughs> but if you need it, yeah. Why a gift you need. do I need no, some I gotta take mine back. Draw. I got him back. <laughs> and still, you don't wear drawers twice. Huh? Well, it's new drawers every time. Wait, well, then, you you telling me he changes his every underwear day? and then and then they wash it? I don't think they wash drawers over there. Uh, excuse me. Wait, yes, junior, junior. Every day. Junior. <laughs> what? Yeah. Every day. You wear a new pair of drawers every day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that boy got some money. Oh, you, oh, you ate now. <laughs> This boy got some money. <laughs> okay, okay, watch this. I watch it. Watch it. Hey, um. Wow. You don't have to when, have money to change your drawers. No, no but you he's don't. saying okay, a, new pair. Pair. a new Every pair. A new pair. A new pair. When you wash the load of clothes. What? <laughs> <laughs> what if I do? What do I wash about five when, loads today? When have you washed a load of clothes? <laughs> When have you put the white Before pile over work. here, the, the dark good. colors over here? Oh, uh, we we going on third three years in this house. <laughs> mm, yeah. I saw the laundry right. room three weeks ago. <laughs> first time. You kid. For the first time. Opened the door and was stunned. Oh, you a mess. He were like, oh, this is nice. What is this room? Man, I've I been going past that door. I'd have seen it, but oh I ain't never God. knew. God. You a mess. Uh, uh. No, I haven't. Hey man, seriously, I haven't put a load of clothes in the washing machine. <laughs> well, that's okay. My son washed something for me last year at the camp. Mm. Yeah, it's, you know how to wash. You just have. I did, but these new yeah. washing machines they kind of throw you. A little. Oh yeah, they different. I yeah. don't. I don't really look at it, so I can't really. I could because I can read, so I could figure it out. But I probably not going. <laughs> yes. to. What else? <laughs> what else? Okay, what else do you want? Okay, you said don't get a tie. Don't mm-hmm. get socks and uh, underwear. I like Cuban yeah. cigars. If you can illegally get them in for me, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> okay. So you want now someone you want to break the to law. Yeah. Illegal stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. That's else. not going to happen. Yeah. What about um, like cufflinks and things like that? You got cold. No, nah, no, nah, they're not good. Well, you know what? My daughter Lori bought me a cold blooded pair of cufflinks mm-hmm. for, okay. I think, my birthday. Okay. All right. See, that was nice. Father's mm-hmm. Day is coming. I, I probably won't even see, I'll see two of my sons on Father's Day, but that's mm-hmm. about it. I got it. What about, like, because um, women like this, like a spa day, like a day at the spa? I don't want to go no damn spa. <laughs> hmm. I know what Steve would want. Like, get a trip to Vegas. Get a trip to Vegas. What, girl? What? What? (laughs) You see? You better send me. (laughs) So that's what you want. Oh, you want that? I'll get you that. 
I pay for everything, your hotel room and flight. For, uh, but no, he you price, won't, Junior. He flies no, you private. Won't. What hotel you huh? think you know, you know, Not if I'm paying for it. He old, He in comfort <laughs> with me. <laughs> <laughs> we going to Vegas. And where, and where you putting him up at? To me, where I'm putting him at. Where everybody putting him up Off the strip. What you talking about? <laughs> off the strip. <laughs> we there together. At the Rio. <laughs> we over at the Rio. <laughs> <laughs> they got. They just remodeled it. They got they nice room. At the Rio. <laughs> and he said, yeah, "Not be mad." Now, when there. you walk they in your room, you go see your window. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now we figured it out. Okay, I got trip to, to Vegas. Vegas. Okay, so we can do that. Mm. I know a good gift for him. What? I said it, a trip to Vegas. What else? No, you do. Some shades. Some sunglasses. Yeah, he likes sunglasses. He loves sunglasses. Uh-huh. I don't yeah, want nobody buying me none because I like to try. Yeah, you got to try them on. You got to try them on. Well, look like I ain't going to get nothing again this year. Thank <laughs> you for bringing it up. All right, Thanks uh, for bringing it up, guys. Coming up, your nephew would run that prank back, Steve, uh, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, director and producer Ava DuVernay is not your auntie, okay? We'll tell you all about it. But, yeah, mm-hmm. she, she doesn't want to be your auntie. But right now, the nephew's in the building with Run That Prank Back. What you got, nephew? Your son and my daughter. Your son and my daughter. <laughs> what about it? Yo, just, just, you're here running. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Darren's, Darren's father. Is this Darren's father? Yes, it's Darren Singer. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm calling you. L- L- LaShonda is my daughter. She goes to school college up there with your son. Uh-huh. And the, I'm getting, the word I got a few minutes ago was that the, the two of them then run off and then got married together. I don't okay. know what, what 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 make them run off and get married like wait. that. Wait, 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 wait. Where did you hear this from? I just got a phone call from one of the kids at the school saying that they didn't, that this the girl that grew up with and went to school. Grew up with all two grade school. She called and said, "Lashonda and Darren then, then, then ran off and got married together." And they done it. They say they done it yesterday. Or so. but, I, I wait, wait, now, wait, 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 wait. My son ain't. My son ain't. I talked to him uh, about three days ago, and he he ain't done nothing like that. I know. So they uh, said they did it yesterday. I've been calling Lashonda. And call her. Ain't nobody picking up. And I call her. The, the, the boy, they give me the boy phone number. And I call him. And ain't nobody picking up and answering or nothing. It, just, uh, it, it ain't like my baby girl do like nothing, uh, nothing, well, nothing like this here. Well, it's not like my son to do nothing like that without talking to me first. So uh, let me call down there and talk to Darren. And uh, I, I give me your number. And I'll, I'll call you back. I'm going down there to that school myself. I'm going to find both of them. Now, I'm going to call you to let you know this. Now, if I find out that my baby girl then ran off and got married because she done got pregnant, I'm, I promise you I'm going to do something to that boy of yours if he got my baby pregnant. You hear me? Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. You're not going to do nothing to my son. Now, I, got... I, I, I understand about your daughter, but that's my son now. You're not going down and put your hands on my son. If he... If you got my baby, if you got me, that's my only baby I got. That's it. Well, well, I understand that's your only baby, but that's that's my only son. If you talking about going to put your hands on him, you're going to have a problem. If he, if he got my baby pregnant, your son, Darren, go I'm going to beat his I mean what? that. I mean oh, it. What, what, what's your name again? What's your Dylan, name? Dylan, my name. You hear me? And who is my baby? What's, what's your name? What's your name? Dillard. D I L L A. I know how to spell your damn name. Look here, Mr. Dillard. Uh, you're not going to put your hands on my son. Now, yeah, my I, baby pregnant, I am. And, it, and that's the only reason I can see her doing something like that. Because I told her, I told her years and years and years, you don't make no baby. You don't make no baby and not be married. You don't do it. Hey. If she, it, it, yeah, she yeah, went yeah. off and got married, that means she tried to make it right. That's what she did. Mr. Diller, Mr. Diller, listen to me now. I understand that's your daughter. I'm sorry if she's pregnant or whatever, but let me talk to my son before you go down there and talk, try to do something crazy. Okay? Let me tell you something. Your son didn't coerce my baby girl into getting married and he didn't got her pregnant. I know what's going on. I know what it is. My, now, my, my son ain't done 
done nothing to your dog. Let me call down there and talk to him before you talk about going down there and putting your hands on somebody. I told my baby, I told him, leave them little thugs alone. He ain't nothing but a thug. I wait, told him. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. But don't be accusing my son of being no damn thug now. Well, what, what kind of man run off and get mad at the age of 20 and ain't talk to the parents or nobody? What make them do something like that? Well, you talking about, I told you my son ain't done nothing to you. Well, how, how did you raise him? How did you raise him? You ever did you didn't raise him right? Wait a minute now. Who the hell are you talking to? I'm talking to you. If my baby pregnant, I'm going to beat your boy. If you done that, you're going to get your toe out too. Hold on, my Hold on, hold on. Who the hell you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you. If you you ain't going to play I'm talking to you. Hold on, hold on, man. You ain't going to put your hands on nobody. You put your hands on my so you don't have a clap. You understand me? That's my son. My now, baby I understand baby. about your daughter, but that's my, my baby. Son. Better not be friend of my baby. Better not be. Hey man, hey, hey, that's my son. You talking about putting your hands on? You gonna have a problem with me? If my baby pregnant, I promise you, she ain't gonna never know her daddy. Cause I'm gonna do something to that boy. You hey hear me? Man, that's the last time I want to hear you. You gonna do something to my son now? Now you go uh, sit on down, gather yourself, and and, and, and uh, relax for a minute. Let me call my son, and I I'll get back to you because I got something else I need to tell you. What well, say it, man? What, what else you got? I got something else. Before I go down to that school and get the whooping, I want you to know one thing before I get off this phone. What is it, man? Is you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, Mr. Darren, you just got pranked by your son, Darren Jr. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That boy. <laughs> that boy got better sense than that. <laughs> you no, know I got high blood pressure. <laughs> what the hell? Wait, I call his mama <laughs> and tell him what's more than done. Wasting my time fooling me. <laughs> I got to ask you, man, what is what is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. Elope. <laughs> 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 still goes on today, you know that, don't you? Go to Vegas. Mm. <laughs> different, that's different eloping, man. I, I keep talking up Vegas, huh? Yeah, you want to yeah. go. That's yeah, what that's that like, is. That's it. That's it. Eloping. Yeah. Hey, it's that time, y'all. I am um, I'm getting there. I'm getting ready to shoot my... Ready to Love season two. Oh, congratulations! Oh, good. I'm at awesome. I'm at a hundred and not, I'm still at this, I'm still stuck on one ninety two, mm-hmm. but I'm trying oh. to get to that one eighty five because I feel like I'm gonna look a lot better. That's where I was last year. Okay, I was at one eighty five. You gonna Let look a lot a different? I'm gonna look sexier, Uncle. No, no, what? stop <laughs> saying you are gonna look better. You are gonna look different. Well, what I'm gonna you, look sexier and better. <laughs> what yeah. did you eat today, Tommy? Oh. Uh, this I haven't eaten anything stuck. this right morning. There. I haven't eaten anything this morning, sure. But yesterday, I ain't gonna lie to you. I had four chicken wings. I did, and that that set me back. <laughs> that set me back. <laughs> Day before yesterday, I ran five miles. Did yesterday didn't do nothing. It was not Ate the some chicken wings. wings that set you back. What was, what was it? Though? Something else. You don't get. What? It ain't ever just. The, the... Well, were they fried? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My man. <laughs> With some <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 Tommy, what weight you at right now? 192. Yeah, that's exactly where your ass going to be when this season starts. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Coming no, up man. at the top of the hour, entertainment news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, in today's trending entertainment news, referring to someone as auntie with no relation is usually a term of endearment, right? Well, Mm -hmm. filmmaker Ava DuVernay does not see it that way. When she sat down with uh, Van Lathan uh, from TMZ, everybody knows Van from TMZ. Well, anyway, he has a podcast. Um, Ava revealed that uh, she finds it slightly shady. She says, first of all, I have a real issue uh, recently. I've been getting called on Twitter, Auntie Ava. Uh, Why? Why? She said, am I that old? Because I don't feel that old. Van tried to explain that fans use the term out of respect for what Ava brings to the culture. While she can appreciate the concept, she wasn't having it. Naturally, social media weighed in and made Auntie a trending hashtag. Ava joined in to let everyone know 
uh, how she prefers to be addressed. For the record, uh, she says she happily responds to Miss Duvernay, Sis, Queen, Ava, Miss Ava. Okay? Nah. <laughs> That's, uh, auntie, That's it. forget about That's it. it. No, no, no. No. So, Steve, you deal with this all the time. Uh, I get called Uncle, Uncle Steve, Steve a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Marjorie gets called Aunt Marjorie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We cool with it. That's different. No, She's yeah. not no the right you thing. cool with it. Let oh, me step okay. in right here. Uh, okay, Uncle comes from a niece or a nephew. <laughs> Blood. Okay? That's when you say uncle or mm-hmm. auntie. Mm-hmm. If it's not your uncle or your auntie, <laughs> then guess what? Mm-hmm. What? Guess what? what? It's not yours. Use Junior? your own. Well, damn that's what uncle. I was about to say. Tommy, well, how you feel possessive. like that? Because I call him Uncle Steve all the time. He responds to But he every ain't time. your damn uncle. But well, watch, well, watch this, Uncle Steve. Yeah. No. He say something every time. Where, why, where's your uncle's at, uh, Junior? <laughs> well, well, right, where's your uncle's? Well, right now, he over there sitting next to you. What are you talking no, about? No, no. Where is your uncle's? <laughs> how many he, uncles you got? How many uncles you got, Junior? <laughs> this one right here. No. How many? Oh, my real you, uncles, like in my blood. family. Yeah, like your my mother's blood. brothers or your oh, father's yeah. brothers. Father's oh, brother. by, yeah. by seven. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you proud of any of them? Not really. <laughs> okay. See, this is the problem. <laughs> proud, <laughs> proud, proud of this one I got sitting over here. <laughs> this, this is the problem. <laughs> What's the problem? Everybody so wants my damn uncle. Get your own uncle. <laughs> Wait, hold on, Tommy. Wait a minute. Hold on, dog. Why is you so possessive? He is because possessive. this is my uncle. I'm the one that was born with a rich ass uncle. And if you wasn't, that's just that's just you just didn't get one. Okay, but watch this though, Uncle Steve. Okay, no, no, no. Yo. That's a personal he problem. He say that yeah. every time. But Snoop Dogg calls you uncle. Yeah. Yeah. They call Everybody. him Uncle and, Snoop now. Yeah. And when they I do see Snoop, 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 I want to call him this with him. What? Everybody call when, him up. Say that what now? When you see when, Snoop? When what? I see Snoop, uh-huh. I will address this issue with him. <laughs> oh, when is that? Because I'm going to get Man, the Man, I, I swear to God, we're going to be sitting right there. <laughs> I know. When I see Snoop, I will let him know this is my uncle and not yours. Oh, Snoop, please call it's in. Steve, <laughs> Mr. Harvey. That's it. <laughs> it ain't, hey, Unc, Uncle Steve. It ain't that. Okay. Everybody get calls him that, though, Tom. I'm telling everybody across the country right I don't, now. I think you're get wrong. your own That's damn so wrong. Steve belongs to the world, yeah. Tommy. He's international. No, no. no well, no, I tell no, you no, what, Tommy. No. You can't whoop the world ass. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what you can't do. I'm not going to try and whoop the world ass. Because the world ass. call him up. This. Wait, Junior, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to try and whoop the world ass. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I just know this. Whoa. All right, look, uh, I, we don't know what you just said, Tommy, but anyway. Uh, he, he this said is, I'm not going to try and whoop the world ass. We still don't oh, know, man. and it is time to go to headlines with Miss Ann, Steve. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Wan Whip. <laughs> no, no. And trip, everybody. Okay, (laughs) this is Ann Tripp with the news. Thank you. President Trump arrived in Ireland yesterday, expressing his respect for the Emerald Isle. This trip is really about uh, great relationships that we have with the UK. And uh, I really wanted to do this stop in Ireland. It was very important to me because of the relationship I have with the people and with your prime minister. And he has like a golf resort there, too. Today he's in France because today is June 6th. That's right. It's internationally known as D-Day or the day that the U.S., the British and the Canadian troops landed on the French coast at Normandy in order to dislodge the Nazis from France. And as Queen Elizabeth noted yesterday, the strategy won the day but was nevertheless very costly in terms of casualties. Seventy-five years ago, hundreds of thousands of young soldiers, sailors and airmen left these shores in the cause of freedom. Many of them would never return, and the heroism, courage, and sacrifice of those who lost their lives will never be forgotten. Many dignitaries will be in France and Normandy today. The marked that 75th anniversary. By some estimates, over 4,000 Allied troops were killed that day. Another 5,000 or so left wounded.
In Florida, a judge says that a sheriff's deputy now under arrest for not doing anything as a gunman was shooting and killing students and faculty inside of a Parkland High School last year. That guy's going to remain in jail until he surrenders his passport. After the shooting, Scott Peterson retired and moved from Florida to North Carolina. Peterson faces 11 charges. If convicted on all of them, he could face as much as 100 years behind bars. The U.S. Supreme Court says it will not reconsider the federal sentence given to a white, now former South Carolina cop who killed an unarmed black man in 2015 by shooting him several times in the back. Michael Slager's lawyer has appealed to the nation's highest court over his 20-year prison sentence. Slager's uh, state trial for murdering Mr. Walter Scott ended in a hung jury. Then Slager pled guilty to violating Scott's civil rights because he was hoping to get a lesser sentence. However, a federal judge sentenced Slager based on the underlying charge of second-degree murder. Slager claims that's unfair. Well, the first jury couldn't decide. Well, the high court says, no, we're not going to weigh in on that. That means the 37-year-old Slager will remain in prison until at least the year 2034. The homeless problem in Los Angeles growing. The results of the annual homeless count show that some 59,000 people are living on the streets of the city of Los Angeles, a 12% jump from over last year. And today is whatever day. So sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Because sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, Golden State Warriors are taking their beef with Drake to new levels. What is going on? Well, you know, mm. Drake and uh, 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 Pusha T had a beef last year. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. both were going back and forth over diss tracks and everything. So the Golden State Warriors played Pusha T's dr- diss track, you know, the story of edition, in a pregame playlist while warming up on the court last night in Oracle Arena, which did not help them because Toronto took the game mm-hmm. 123 to 109. Now it's two to one, Toronto. Do anybody mm-hmm. think it's over? No, no it ain't over. Not now. over. No, no. Over. you can't never say it's over with them. No, I'm not long as Steph Curry breathing. That's right. And he dropped forty-seven last night, man. God, yeah. he was six points and Durant points. Yeah, he scored everybody and Clay. Mm-hmm. 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 But you know, Leonard Lowry. You know, Leonard had thirty. Lowry had twenty-three. Now, this is giving them a lot of confidence. You need to know that. It does. Yeah. yeah. It does. But let's not be crazy. I promise you Durant and Clay is going to be in this game, game four on Friday. I don't know, Junior. It just seemed like Durant would have been back by now. It, what, that, it, it's his calf, right? It's his calf, yeah. It just seemed like he'd have been back by now, dog. On the real. Seemed you like, mean injury wise? Yeah, it just seemed like he'd have been back. I mean, I know you know the longer you you sit out, you know, the, you know you can heal a little bit more. But uh, I don't know. Well, Tom, it wasn't crucial at that time. This is crucial. They can't go down three one. Yeah, we'll see. Then. Did did uh, cousins or cousins play? Did he play? Yeah, yeah, he played. Night? Yeah, yeah, okay. but he hurt again. <laughs> yeah, somebody his he need to trade his calf. That's the only way prompt. you beat these boys. They're gonna have to stay. Somebody got to hurt. You gotta be hurt. Golden State, man. If they just get any one of them back, they're gonna be they're gonna be formidable. So you ain't finna go in there. You not finna go in there without a fight for game four. They not just gonna hand you game four. Okay. Well, oh, who you going for, Tommy? Let me hear you. I'm going for Toronto. They beat the Golden State. Beat the mess out of my Rockets. I'm going for Toronto. Me too. You cheer. <laughs> you cheering for your Rockets was not gonna change, but Golden State was gonna do. That's all right. I'm pulling for Toronto. Let's go. I'm with Drake. Okay. Okay. Well, you ain't you ain't heard Drake say nothing else, hey. I mean, I can't afford the, that seat that Drake sit in because that that's the woo. Yeah. <laughs> that's something. Can't afford it, huh? Nah, nah. You can. Yeah. I know you can. Well, I, don't, I don't believe that. How much you think them seats cost? They showed it the other day. They got some seats that was twenty twenty thirty thousand dollars down there. Huh. I mean, you got that in your back pocket. You can afford Man, that. Man, do you know how, what would that cause in my house when my wife see 20, me spending that kind of money 20, for 30, a ticket? Boy, you keep that in your shell. No damn well. Wow. Shut up. What shell? His turn shell. The one on the no back. damn well. <laughs> one, of, one is hiding his high ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. We uh, coming up next I'm not at doing 30. This with these two. <laughs> coming up next at 34 after the hour. More backlash. More fallout for a central. Park 5 former prosecutor Linda Fairstein. She resigned from the board of her alma mater right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, everyone's talking about the Netflix series When They See Us, which tells the story of Kevin Richardson, Raymond Santana, Antron McRae, Youssef Salam, and uh, Corey Wise, also known as the Central Park Five. The series by filmmaker Ava DuVernay re-examines the accusations, the false confessions, and the aftermath of the case against the boys who were teenagers back then when they were accused of raping a jogger in Central Park. Former prosecutor Linda Fairstein is now facing a new round of backlash and criticism thanks to the Netflix series. Linda Fairstein, who is played by Felicity Huffman, uh, is portrayed in the show as immediately convinced of the boys' guilt, despite no physical evidence linking them to the scene and descriptions in their confessions that didn't match the crime scene. After Mateus Riaz, uh, a serial rapist, confessed to the attack, in 2002 and DNA confirmed his account, the men were then exonerated. Uh, As we mentioned, the backlash continues. Linda Fairstein has just resigned as a member of the Board of Trustees at uh, Vassar College. And uh, there is also an online push to boycott her bestseller crime novels and uh, her books. So there you go. They're they're just. I mean, you know, it's not a lot they can do because they those boys, they're men now. They can't get that time served back. But, um, you know. Oh, it's a very good scene. Yeah, yeah. It's I, very. I good. got. I gotta watch it. Oh, yeah, it's called it's When They good. See Us. Yeah. It's very yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what it was. I saw the billboards, and then I I, I saw. And they pretty a, much stuck. To, excuse me. They pretty much stuck to the facts. Oh yeah. In yeah. It. They pretty much stuck yeah. to the facts. But it's their life after they get out. Yeah. That's really disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. How they and, had to be yeah. treated. Yeah, and they sue the city, right? Yeah. For, and they got yeah. like forty one million dollars. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. How much? Forty one million. million. Mm-hmm. Because the system looked at them as if they were still they guilty. Were still, yeah. And they would yeah. not admit to them being guilty. Yeah. You know how yeah, you go to the meeting like, hi, I'm a drug addict, I'm something. No, mm-hmm. they wouldn't even do that. I'm a rapist. They would not admit to that. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't even. No. They, they would not they admit didn't to it. They didn't do it. They, didn't they coerced have. those confessions out of them. Though They said only two out of the five boys even knew each other. That, that's they, it. That's yeah. what's crazy. Yeah. They, yeah. These kids didn't yeah. even know each other. No, they on tape lying about the other boys, but they couldn't even remember their name. Right. Right. Yeah. And Corey Wise, we met him, Shirley, at the uh, Circle of Sisters yeah. Expo at uh, our home station, 107.5. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. WBLS mm-hmm. in New York. I remember. We you. had a chance. Yeah, mm-hmm. we had a chance to meet and talk with him. Very, very nice guy. And he was very young. He he was one of the youngest ones yeah. that went through. They were what like 15, he went through. 17. Yeah. Really young. Yeah. But yeah, Carly, I, I have forgotten all about that till you mentioned it to me yeah. that we have met him. I do remember that young man. Mm-hmm. What a very, very, I mean, after all he's gone through, oh, he man. wasn't bitter oh, it, 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 or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to make And they listen to the mm-hmm. show, Steve. They do. Yeah. <clears throat> so they just really? plotted this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. And, yeah. and wasn't Donald Trump, didn't he have a lot to say around that time? Took yeah. out a full page ad. Yeah. Yeah. Stop uh, and frisk, from wasn't From what it? I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, this par for his course. Those young men, um, man, sadly, it happens to so many people falsely charged. I remember I was 14, 15. If you got shot in the hood where we lived Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and your parents or grandparents was around and they knew it was like not too deep in you like in your leg or backyard, they took it out at home. Oh. Mm. Because they didn't want to take their sons up to that hospital because you know you got to report any gunshot. Oh. And because uh prosecutors try to build cases back in the day like they do now and mm-hmm. there wasn't no forensic science, they would put cases on dudes. Wow. Wow. Oh, so a lot day. of times, man, if you got shot in the hood and it would, didn't look like it was deep, they tried to get the bullet out at the house. Instead of taking you up there and then here come the police with that uh, okie doke they was pulling. It was a lot of we, that, man. Well, um, when, when did you think we about watching it, um, When did you think about watching it? Oh, I'm going to yeah. watch it. Because yeah. the yeah. day you watch it, make sure you ain't got to go nowhere. Because if you see somebody, you gonna get mad as hell. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. See. But you know what? I am I am glad that this story has finally made it to the mainstream and yes. pe- where people can really get the truth behind this story. Because that that was just a, a, a terrible just blotch on th- this country. How they did those boys, you know, not the first time, and I'm sure it won't be the last. But it was really horrible how they were treated. All right, nephew Tommy is up next with a prank phone call as we switch gears right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, keeping it all in the family. Keeping it all in the family. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for his nephew? Well, Shirley, you know they have child uh, daycare. You know, they have child where you drop your kids off. You understand that, right? Of course. <laughs> but they also have adult daycare. Oh. Where you drop your parents off. And how is this fun? Yeah. <laughs> well, no. you fist the seat. I'm not standing. understanding. You fist yeah. the seat. <laughs> you fist the seat. You play too much. Well, we finna drop somebody, my mom. Hold on. <laughs> Run it, cat. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Miss Sharon, please. Yes, this is Sharon. Miss Sharon, this, uh, my name is Evan. I'm giving you a call from uh, <laughs> Adult Daycare. Okay. <laughs> adult what? Daycare. My, my name is Evan, and I, I, I got your number and all your information here on file. Um, it looks like you're going to be joining us starting on Monday, so we're excited to have you. And I, was, I wanted to just give you a call and kind of give you the lay of the land of what we have here and, and how you, how much fun you're going to have being here most of the day uh, with us. So from my, my understanding, you're going to be here probably the majority of this year. What are you talking, what are you talking about being there? Where? Being where? Here at the, the adult daycare. Adult daycare. Where? Where's that? What are you talking about? Okay. Evan? You, is that what you said your name is? Evan? My name My name is Evan. Yes, ma'am. And, and okay. your daughter is Diane? Diane. That's my daughter. You know my daughter? Yeah. Yes. Well, she's the one that has you signed up. You're going right. to be at the adult daycare, so I'm assuming she's going to be dropping you off every morning. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, Evan. Evan, hang on a second, all right? First of all, I don't know who you are. You don't know who I am. I don't know how the f- you know who my daughter is, but this is this is really uh, inappropriate and weird and like you trying to get what do you what do you want? Okay. You want money well, from me? Are you like a solicitor? No, 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 ma'am. No, 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 not at all, Miss Sharon. No, I'm, your daughter has signed you up to be yeah. here at the adult daycare during the day, so yeah. she's going to. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. There's no way she would do that. Adult daycare? What do I need adult daycare for? For what? For well, what? evidently, are you home alone most of the time during the day? Who cares if I'm home alone? Who's a, why are you asking me that? You trying to break into my house? No. Well, I, I, no I don't know no, who you are, man. I don't know who Ms. the hell Sharon, you are. I have, okay. I, I call, I, look, I'm hooked up to that uh, 911 stuff thing. Like, I could just do a panic call right now, and they'll trace this call, and they will come to you and arrest you because you're harassing me. No, right? no, you no, no, no. Okay, Miss Sharon, I'm not harassing you. Your daughter, Diane, came in and yes, signed Diane. you up. Yes, she signed you up for, to go to this daycare Monday yeah. through Friday while she's at yeah. work. So she's going to be dropping you off, and then she'll pick you up in the evenings on her way home from work. I don't, that's, know, that's, I don't know where you got that from. I don't know who told you that. Yeah, you got my daughter's name, and this is really just freaking me out, you know, a little bit over here, Ivan. Because I don't know why you know my name, you know my daughter's name. Uh, this is like... I, the only reason I, I know you all's name, Miss Ms. Sharon, is because she came in and gave all the information, and she has paid for you to come to the adult daycare on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear Hey, Evan, you know what? You sound like a nice guy. You know what I mean? Like you're smooth. You got a nice voice. You're you're you know like you know what to say. I don't know who the hell you are though. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, you know what I, I mean? Know like I'm I, not going to no daycare center. I'm not going to a daycare center. Okay, I'm not but, going to say because I'm fine. Just get that through your head. There's nothing wrong with me. I stay home. I got a dog. I walk the dog. I go grocery shopping. My daughter comes over. Everything's fine. I don't need no daycare center. Okay. Well, you understand I, what I'm saying, is Evan? There, is, there, is there a reason why she would sign you up, ma'am? She must think no, she must be no. looking out for your, your the best, you know, your health. Let me ask I, I don't you know. something. Let me ask you. Are you single? Am I what? Are you single? Are you married? What, what does that have to do with anything? I, I'm not coming to no daycare center, all right, Evan? Like, if you want to come to my house and you what, want to what? see how I live, you can. Uh, uh, I'm no, switch, I don't. I'm I, switching I, this shit. I'm switching it up. Okay, I don't need to come to your home. I'm more concerned about making sure you're comfortable here at the adult daycare when you get here on Monday. Yeah, I'm not coming there. That's it. 
I'm not coming there because there's nothing wrong with me. I'm not coming out of my house. But I'll tell you okay. what, Evan, you, I don't know, like, I, I like your voice. I just like your voice. You know what uh, I mean? Miss, wait a minute, Miss Shane. How long, wait, um, How old are you? Uh, How old are you? Um, I'm 50. 50? You ever been with an 89-year-old lady? Wow. Wow. I'm 89, and you sound really nice. That's oh, all. Like, uh, at first I was scared of you. At first I was, to be honest. I was scared of you. And now I'm not. Like, I don't know why. I'm just not. You know what I mean? Like, you just sound nice. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know who you uh, are, but. Okay. So, uh, well, this okay, is. Will you be there? Is, will you be at the daycare this, center? Like you. Because I, I like to meet you. I, I'll I'll be at the daycare when you arrive on Monday, but I mean I'm not. Uh, oh, Miss Sharon, I, I won't be able to. I, mean, oh, yeah. I like that, Miss Sharon. That's nice. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, okay, so should I should I reach out to Diane about this? Yeah, whole yeah reach out to her. Reach out to her. Sure, reach out to her. Okay, but you're not gonna like it. Yeah, go ahead. You're not going to come in Monday? I might. I might. I might. I might. I don't know. If you're going to be there, I just might. But, but Sharon, it's not about me. It's about you coming in, and you're gonna. this is where you're going to be uh, Monday through Friday from yeah. 10. Yeah. All right. Listen. You know, and, there's, 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 there's yeah, other yeah, people I'm your age it. here. There's there's a lot of ladies your age and a lot of ladies. men your age like, here. I'm not into the ladies. I'm not into ladies. I'm not into ladies. I'm not I didn't – I'm not trying – yeah, not into it. I'm into I'm into you. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think it's a situation like your 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 daughter doesn't want you to be by yourself. Listen, yeah. Could you? Could I call you back? Can, Can you I call, call me you back? back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let oh. me call you back. Let me call oh. you back in a couple of minutes. I'm on the shitter, and I got pulled my off of the thing. Well, this is the first this has ever happened to me. Okay, uh, Miss Sharon, can I tell you who I am? Evan. I am nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your daughter, Diane, got me to prank call you, but I promise you, you're different. You're oh. different. <laughs> I promise you I'm different. I promise you I'm different. You're related that, to Steve Harvey, like the guy on TV? That, that's my Get uncle. The- out of here. He is gorgeous. Evan, call me back, all right? Oh, call me back. Okay. Get it. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. I love you. Oh my God. I think I kind of got right. played towards the damn uh, end. Yeah. 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 See there? How she start flirting with me? She's feeling you, huh? How I go there? Sexy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you want to be, don't you? Uh, but not, like, not with, no. Excuse I, me? Is that what you want? Yeah. I want to be sexy, but not to mm. people. Uh, careful. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah, be careful what you wish mm. for, sexy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you probably ain't going to be able to pull it off in front of nobody you know, so. Yeah. Sex ain't got no age limit. Oh, oh God, down the nursing home, you the truth. Seem like. <laughs> I love it, Jerry. <laughs> you down there killing at the nursing home. Uh, thank That's you, nephew. That's not love, Shirley. That's disillusion. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, it's the strawberry letter. Uh, subject: Keeping it all in the family. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on sex, on relationships, on dating, on work, on parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right now. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Yeah, Tommy, you might need to say that again. Hmm. Buckle up. (laughs) Hold on tight. Here it is. All right. Strawberry letter. What is this You've letter You've been about? warned. Subject, okay. keeping it all in the family. Dear Stephen Shirley, I need your advice, but I pray that you are not too stern with me. I am a 31-year-old successful and beautiful woman with two children ages three and one. I am not married, but I am involved with a married man. It's my sister's husband. 
They have been married for 12 years, and I started sleeping with her husband five years after they were married. My two children are actually his. Damn. God. My sister and hold my... Up, hold up, uh-huh. so You got to take me slow now. Okay, I told you. I told you. This letter right here. You know, I'm trying to take yeah. notes as I go along. Oh, okay. Right. You can't write fast. I'm just faint. Uh, I know. <laughs> okay. How old is these kids? Three and Three one. Three and one, yeah. She says, I'm not married, but I am involved with a married man. It's my sister's husband. Mm. They have been married for 12 years, and I started sleeping with her husband five years after they were married. My two children are actually his. My sister and my family members have no idea that I've been with this man for so long. Years ago. How many years? Five? uh Uh-huh. She was sleeping with him for five years. Five years into their 12-year marriage. So that's long so seven, yeah. Seven. Mm-hmm. All right. My sister and my family members have no idea that I've been with this man for so long. Years ago, I started lying about dating a guy that lives out of town, and I told them that it's a crazy relationship, so they don't need to meet him. They do think that I take the kids to see him, though. My sister's husband, uh, he is the father of my kids, and... Uh, he was happy that I could give him a family after they found out that my sister was not able to have children. He has taken care of my children and I since day one. We have a house and a pretty comfortable lifestyle. He and yeah. I have been on... Yeah. I'm uh, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. <laughs> Mm. All right, he and I he and I have been on family vacations together with the kids, and I'm not sure why my sister has never suspected us. I was worried that my three-year-old would start talking and telling it all, so I had to limit the time that I let my children stay around my family. Now that I have two children by this man, I want him around full time. So I gave him an ultimatum. He said that he would never leave me, and he would never leave my sister. He said the arrangement works, and there's no need to mess it all up. I am so in love with this man, and I am willing to be truthful about it all in hopes that I can have him to myself. I know we are wrong for all of this, but we have a chance to make it right. What do you think? Keep quiet or fight for this man. Please help. I'm with you, Steve. I was through. I was through way about halfway Jesus. through this letter. <laughs> really, when she said she's sleeping with her sister's husband, uh, this has to be the most trifling letter I think we've ever gotten, and we've gotten a whole lot of trifling letters. But oh, heap of letters. Because yeah, because you are just clueless. I mean, you're you're just clueless. You said it's wrong. You know it's wrong. Your brother-in-law slash man is cheating with his wife's sister and he has two children with you? Why? Why would you do this to your sister? I, I don't understand why you would do something like this. You think you're helping because she can't have kids and you can? Yes, your children are going to start talking and calling him daddy. Yes, so now you're going to you're involving the children by depriving them of their father and their family because now you have to keep them away. No more family vacations. And like Steve said, where is this house? Your sister never comes to your house? This is when it's okay to say uncle. This is okay now. <laughs> I mean, think if, 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 if your brother-in-law had kids, they would be cousins and brothers and sisters. I mean... You're so in love with this man, you're willing to be truthful about it all in hopes that you can have him to yourself. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Yeah, you're wrong for all of this. You don't have a chance to make this right. The only way you, there's nothing you can do to make this right. There's absolutely nothing you can do. What do we think? We think you're crazy. We think your brother-in-law, uh, man, he's crazy. Uh, uh, should you keep quiet or fight for this man? Fight for him? He's not even yours to fight for. This is your sister's husband of 12 years. I don't understand. I I really, really don't understand where your head is in all of this. Because you say, you know, you know it's wrong. You ask us not to be too stern with you. But what are we supposed to do? I mean, come on. This, This letter is crazy. Really crazy. And we don't have a lot of time. So, Steve, take it away, please. I, I, I mean, I don't know what to tell this woman.
I, I really don't. I wish you hadn't wrote in to her. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say to her? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what don't be stirring me. The hell you ask me for. What do you think? Do I keep quiet or fight for this man? The hell is wrong with you? Damn, black people. You no, see, don't what's what's wrong? You trifling on so many letters. You always try to trick people at the beginning. Whenever people didn't do something trifling, this is how they open the letter. I'm a beautiful, yeah. successful, 31 <laughs> year old woman. Oh, it's something ugly about you. I can hey, tell you that. Hang We're on, Steve. Point it out in the damn letter. Yeah, part two is coming up with Steve at 23 after the hour. Uh, today's strawberry letter subject: keeping it all in the family. Ugh. Uh, we'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, let's recap today's strawberry letter. Which... This ain't no recap. I'm just finna get into it. Ain't no damn recap. 31-year-old woman say she beautiful with two children, three and one. She ain't married, but she's involved with a married man. Now, the married man that she involved with is her sister's husband. Mm-hmm. Now, they've been married for 12 years. She started sleeping with the dude five years after they were married. They've been sleeping together seven years. My two children, the ones that's three and one, they are actually his. Lady, first of all, my sister and my family members have no idea that I've been with this man for so long. You trifling. I don't know how you don't want us to be stern. You don't understand how wrong you are. First of all, you're having an affair with the married man. But this married man you chose to have an affair with is your sister's husband. Hello. I mean, man, that's trifling. That's really, really trifling. You was going to see a married man. Okay, cool. I get it. Just go get you one, somebody else. Now, your family and your sister... They don't have any idea about this. You know, you started lying to cover it by dating this man that lives out of town. And I told him that it's a crazy relationship. So they don't need to meet him. And now, they do think that I take the kids to see him, though. So I want to hear this. See, this is what I wanted to learn. How did your family think that you take the kids to see him? And your sister's husband knows he's the father of the kids, and he was happy that you could give him some kids after he found out that his wife, who is your sister, wasn't able to have children. Now, notice how you started to weave this story to start to start adding so it can make sense to you. Mm-hmm. So my sister can't have kids. He's so grateful that I was able to give him two children. But this dude is screwing his wife's sister. God damn. Man, y'all That's trifling, so... man. Okay, Whoa. then okay. my sister's okay. husband knows that he the father of the kids and was happy because I could give him a family after they found out my sister wasn't able to have children. See, so now she's trying to make it like she done done a service. Hmm. Like exactly, I'm doing something Steve. good. Exactly. Because mm. he wanted a family and he couldn't have one. Mm-hmm. So I gave it to him. He done yes, took sir, care of me and the kids since day one. We have a house and a pretty comfortable lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. We have a house. Where? Yeah. <laughs> what? Where is it? And where do they think you take the kids to? He and I have been on family vacations together with the kids. And I'm not sure why my sister has never suspected us. Uh, wait, wait a minute. How do you go, explain this to me, because I'm dumbfounded. How do you go on vacation with your sister's husband and y'all didn't have two kids? How do y'all go on family vacation with the kids? What do the kids call him? Do the kids ever see him with her? What y'all do at Christmas and Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. What the hell is going on here? How long you think you, and you keep talking about should you fight for this man or or just be quiet? You ain't going to be able to be quiet with this too much longer. Mm -mm. 
These kids, they don't know this little crazy story you done wove. I was worried that my three-year-old would start talking and telling it all. So I had to limit the time I let my children stay around my family. What? Nah, yeah, because they... He can say daddy, he can talk. They think he is daddy. But he is they daddy, but he they uncle daddy. Exactly. Oh, no. Now, I have two children by this man. I want him around full time, so I gave him an ultimatum. He said he would never leave me, and he would never leave my sister. He said the arrangement works, and there's no need to mess it up. Yeah, it works for him. This fool don't know how this ain't going to work for him. (laughs) He has no idea what's coming down the pike for him. Right, right. You have to pay for stuff like this, brothers. Mm -hmm. I've done some wrong in my day. You got to pay for it. This I'm so in love with this man, and I'm willing to be truthful about it all. Wait a minute, you finna what? <laughs> what? 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 What do that mean? You finna go be truthful with it to who? To your sister? To your mama? To your family? That's what you finna tell them. You out. I just want to say one more thing when we come back on this. We all right, all right, uh, all right. We're we're gonna do more, Steve, on this letter. Um, this is a crazy letter. Keeping it all in the family. Uh, <laughs> we'll get back into it. Part three, right after this, at forty six after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll get into more of the show with Cheryl Underwood. But right now, Steve, we want to get back into the strawberry letter uh, subject, keeping it all in the family. This letter right here. 31-year-old woman who claims to be beautiful, (laughs) successful, has been seeing a married man. The married man happens to be her sister's husband. She's had two kids with this man. They've gone on family vacations together. She's nervous that the three-year-old was going to start talking, and the baby will. Right now, the three-year-old ain't got the words for it yet, but five, oh, yeah. Four, oh, yeah. They, she didn't have it together a minute. He has taken care of you as her and the children since day one. They got a house together and pretty comfortable. They done been on family vacations together with the kids. I'm not sure why my sister has never suspected us which means you've kind of not cared. Well, not no kind of. Hmm. You have oh. never gave a damn right. about what your sister nope. think or feel because you want this for yourself. Then you said, now you got the two children by this man and you want him around full time. So she went in there and gave the man an ultimatum. He said he would never leave her and he would never leave my sister. He said the arrangement works and there's no need to mess it all up. This thing is unraveling as every time we read it, it's unraveling. So listen to this. I'm so in love with this man that I'm willing to be truthful about it all. In hopes that I can have him to myself. Nope. Wait, okay, lady, first of all, let, let me explain something to you about that statement. In hopes that I can have him all to myself. He ain't never gave himself all to no one person. You don't you don't Uh-oh. recognize that? Uh-oh. Mm. You you don't you don't you don't you don't you're not looking at that statement. I want him all to myself. But he don't want to be all to himself with nobody. He Ooh, doing it now. You stupid. You ain't finna be truthful about it another day. You ain't about a damn thing. I'm gonna have him to myself. Now, I know we are wrong for all this, but we have a chance to make it right. He ain't he stop saying me. Right. Girl, they know right. we have a chance. You said you was going in there. He told me you ain't going in there. Better not say a damn thing. What do you think? Keep quiet or fight for this man. You can't fight for something that ain't yours. Surely right. told you that. You can't fight for this man. He ain't yours. All this is a disaster. It is. All of Big this one. is wrong on so many levels. Yeah. You it's have no family. idea the damage you have done to an entire family structure. Yep. You have no Mm -hmm. idea, lady, and there's nothing we can do to spare you Mm -hmm. from the misery that's coming down your street for this. Hang in there. Get prayed up. Ask for forgiveness. Yep. Yep. That's all you can do. And take care of those kids. Those are the ones that are really going to suffer. All right. You can email us, you know, Steve Harvey FM, or listen to the Strawberry Letter podcast. And uh, Cheryl Underwood is coming up next right here, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, Steve, introduce our girl. She is here. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Shirley Underwood. <laughs> Steve Harvey, listen. President Trump's is out of the country, okay? Trump. Listen, yeah. what we need to do right now, we need to go change all the locks at the White House. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need out. to let That's funny, all Cheryl. the air out the ties of Air Force One. <laughs> they don't need to come back. You know what I'm saying? So while he over there, why don't you just stay over there? But this is what I don't understand. Uh -huh. I don't understand. They got these polls out where they say 54% of the population believe that Trump's is going to get reelected president. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. That's just sound like they done gave up already. Now, mm -hmm. we can't get the impeachment inquiry. They need to start it. See, back when Nixon and the Watergate, Nixon had, like, I think he had, like, a 65% approval rating. And then when they did their impeachment inquiry and all that stuff started coming out and all them hearings, then people start banning bailing on Nixon because they knew what the real story was and they couldn't save him but they told him hey we can't save you so you need to resign why am I telling you all of this don't give up now if you don't like Trump as the president do you first we need an impeachment inquiry and impeachment is not gonna happen overnight but you need to dig into this you need to find out how the Russians took advantage of the fact that the thirst is real with Trump he hmm. wanted to be president that bad that he could take help from our adversary, right. which, in my opinion, means you should not be the president. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And you damn sure should not be representing us now when you talking about you wouldn't go to Vietnam and this is the week where we celebrating. Uh, D -Day. What is the, the D -Day. Yeah, mm -hmm. 75 years. Listen to me. That's not what the commander in chief does. And now and then we got to figure out not just how we get this dude out of office. And if we can't get him out of office, then we need to vote him out of office. But then everybody say, but we don't want Biden. We don't want Biden. Why we don't want Biden? You know why you don't want Biden? Because everybody think they can win this. Biden is the dude that got the highest numbers in the in the little poll. OK, mm -hmm. so obviously somebody like Biden, black people like Biden because he was President Obama's vice president. So why don't y'all stop tripping Democrats? And why don't all the 35 of y'all that's running, why don't y'all rock, <laughs> paper, scissor this and decide who's going to be the vice president and let's get on with putting this dude out of office if that's what you feel. Now, last but not least, everybody talking about this Hyde Amendment and everybody talking about, well, women got the right to vote. Well, before that, it was the 15th Amendment that gave uh, men the right to vote. And then people sold us out. See, we got to go back and study our history while we believe in and supporting everybody but ourselves. There was two amendments, 15th Amendment, 19th Amendment. Then they start doing stuff to black people, so we definitely could not vote. Now let's talk about abortion before I go. And this is me talking, not the Steve Harvey Morning Show. If you don't know anything about Fannie Lou Hammer's life, then you need to study mm -hmm. who Fannie Lou Hammer was. Mm -hmm. Fannie Lou Hammer was a civil rights person that got what they called back then, Tommy Jr., Carla, Shirley, mm -hmm. and Steve, a Mississippi appendectomy. What did she get? She got a hysterectomy. She got sterilized without her say-so mm -hmm. for a minor tumor. That's why she was saying that abortion was genocide. We don't all think alike. We don't all act alike. But we got to come together so we can protect our rights. So don't tell me, well, Biden supports the Hyde Amendment. Let him feel the way he feel. Because we got the worst president in the history of mankind in the White House, and we still fighting over over who going to take this dude out. We yeah. don't need to be fighting over that. We need to come together, and if we don't like him as Americans, vote his ass right up out the White House while he yeah. oversees. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I go too far, Steve? I'm sorry. Wait, no, that's on point right, right there, no, baby girl. No. Perfect. You ain't go no further than he been going. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, His suit don't even look good with a tight vest on with it. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing us. I just, he the work, and I'm a Republican, and I can't stay. Get, oh, Lord. Geez, turn my mic off before I say something. Yeah. Do my good jobs. All of <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Steve. All right, coming up, music and more fun on the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, Shirley Strawberry. It's Good News Thursday. What you got going on? I heard you doing something in the city of Atlanta, my dear. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm a member of the board on the uh, Alma G. Davis Foundation. It's a domestic violence foundation. Uh, she helps women mm-hmm. who have been victims of domestic violence. Anyway, they're having their 10th anniversary this mm-hmm. weekend in Atlanta. Yes, I will be one of the special guests. Uh, it's called Dinner for Divas. She does this every single year. She uh, treats women who have been victims of domestic abuse like divas. She puts she puts on this elaborate dinner for them. It's a it's a, nice. a formal affair. Everybody has to wear you know the long gowns and everything just to mm-hmm. make them feel special oh, and great. to know so that they deserving. can survive and yeah. you know and to looking forward now. But anyway, yes, it's at the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta. And if you need some more information, if you want to get involved or be a part of it, go to Alma G Davis Foundation. That's A L M A G. D A V I S Foundation dot org slash events. Okay, oh, and hopefully sure. I'll see you there Saturday night. Mm-hmm. That's nice, Shirley. Giving Thank back. I like yeah. that dinner for divas. Yeah, like you know that. people don't talk about it a lot. It's not a sexy right. subject. It's not a fun subject to talk about. But you know, it's still happening every day. You know, where women, men, you know, are being violated and you know abused. violence yeah and and mm-hmm. definitely abuse it's the leading cause of injury to women between the ages of 15 and 44 in the US wow. all right wow. yeah wow sure okay. so go to the slash events for more information and we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show All right, guys, in today's trending entertainment news, referring to someone as auntie with no relation is usually a term of endearment, right? Right. Well, Mm -hmm. filmmaker Ava DuVernay does not see it that way. When she sat down with uh, Van Lathan from TMZ, everybody knows Van from TMZ. Well, anyway, he has a podcast. Ava revealed that uh, she finds it slightly shady. She says, first of all, I have a real issue uh, recently. I've been getting called on Twitter, Auntie Ava. Why, she said, am I that old? Because I don't feel that old. Van tried to explain that fans use the term out of respect for what Ava brings to the culture. While she can appreciate the concept, she wasn't having it. Naturally, social media weighed in and made Auntie a trending hashtag. Ava joined in to let everyone know uh, how she prefers to be addressed. For the record, uh, she says she happily responds to Miss DuVernay, Sis, Queen, Ava, Miss Ava. Okay? No. <laughs> That's, uh, auntie, That's it. forget about That's it. it. No, 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 no. So, Steve, you deal with this all the time. Uh, I get with called this Uncle, Uncle Steve, Steve a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Marjorie gets called Aunt Marjorie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We cool with it. That's different. No, She's yeah. no right you do. cool with it. Let oh, me step okay. in right here. Uh-oh. Uh Okay, uncle comes from a niece or a nephew. <laughs> Blood. Okay, that's when you say uncle or auntie. Mm-hmm. If it's not your uncle or your auntie, <laughs> then guess what? Mm-hmm. What? Guess what? what? It's not yours. Use Junior? your own well, damn that's what uncle. What I'm about to say, Tommy, well, how you possessive. feel like that? Because I call him Uncle Steve all the time. He responds every time. But he ain't your damn uncle. But watch, but watch this, Uncle Steve. Yeah. No. He say something every time. Where, why, where's your uncles at, uh, Junior? <laughs> well, well, right, where's your uncles? Well, right now, he over there sitting next to you. What you talking no, about? No, no. Where is your uncles? How many <laughs> uncles you got? How many uncles you got, Junior? This one right here. No. How many oh, uncles? Oh, my real you, uncles. Like in my blood. family? Yeah, like your mother's blood. brothers or your oh, mother's yeah. brothers. Oh, brother, by, yeah. by seven. Okay. Uh-huh. Are you proud of any of them? Not really. <laughs> okay. See, this is the problem. Proud, proud, proud of this one I got sitting over here. <laughs> this, this is the problem. What's the problem? Everybody so wants my damn uncle. Get your own uncle. Wait, a, hold on, Tommy. Wait a minute, hold on, dog. Why is you so possessive? He is because possessive. this is my uncle. I'm the one that was born with a rich ass uncle. And if you what, that's just that's just you just didn't get one. Well, I tell you what, Tommy, you can't whoop the world ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you can't do. All right, look, coming up, our last break of the day, and we'll close out the show with some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey at 49 After the Hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, last break of the day. It's been a crazy day as usual, the kind we like, right? Absolutely. <laughs> 
And here's our fearless leader to take us home with closing remarks. Today, I just want to pose a question because I, I try to find different ways to motivate people as, um, as I ask God to help me find new ways. Uh, today, I just decided to try this. I just want to ask you a series of questions because I'm just trying to get everybody to get to moving towards their dreams. I'm just trying to get everybody to get started on the pathway of accomplishing your visions and your goals and your dreams. It's going to take some action, though. You know, you can't just want something. Have you ever heard people say, if you want something bad enough, it'll happen? That's not true. That, that's, that's so not true. Do you know how many times you've actually wanted something really bad and didn't get it? Uh, what? What? Who? I don't know who said that. Why, why they tell people that if you want something bad enough, it'll really happen. It can happen. No, it won't. It requires an action. Faith without works is dead. If you don't do anything, you can't stop expecting to get everything. If you don't do anything, you can stop expecting to get everything. Now, God is going to give all of us some grace. In spite of our shortcomings and lack of effort, he will give all of us some grace And we'll all get some things that we really don't deserve. You know, he just provides us breaks. But in those breaks, he's trying to sustain you just to get you to say, wow, man, if I had just done a little bit more, what could I have had? Or if I had done a little bit more, what could have happened? So my question today for you is just, I'm asking you a series of very, very simple questions, maybe four or five. You're waiting for what? Tell me what is it you're waiting for? Because oftentimes when I talk to people, I I get some responses that just throw me off. You know, because what you're waiting for what? What is it going to take to get you started? What is the motivation? What is the button? What is the trigger that fires you to get going to moving towards your dreams and visions? You're waiting for what? I don't understand. Are you perfectly comfortable where you are right now? Uh, Have you decided and settled in that this is it for me? Have you gotten tired of waking up and asking the question, wow, it's got to be more to my life than this? What, have you just gotten tired of that? And you don't want to deal with it no more? So you just decided what? That you're just going to lock in like where I am is cool? You all right with that? Let me ask you another question. Have all the ducks ever lined up in a row? Because if that's what you're waiting for, (laughs) let me just ask you. Has it ever been set that, wow, I see how exactly, step by step, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there. Everything is perfect. I'm going to start now. If you're waiting on the perfect time to start, you may never start. Because there is no such a thing as the perfect time. The perfect time is now. That's the perfect time. If you're waiting on something else to happen, it probably ain't going to happen. Because you got to figure like this. Suppose it don't happen. What you going to do then? So you just got to come to that conclusion. Suppose it don't happen. What you going to do then? Suppose you don't get the degree. What you going to do then? You going to fail? Suppose you don't get that job that you got your eyes on. So you don't get that job. So now what? You unemployed the rest of your life? Because you didn't meet that deadline, you can't make another one? You're waiting for what? What's it going to take to get you started? Have your ducks ever all lined up in a row? The answer is no. The perfect time to start is now. Let me ask you this question. Does it appear to be getting any closer even though you're not moving towards it? Uh Uh-oh. Does it appear to be getting any closer even though you're not moving towards it? The answer is no. It's not getting closer because you're not walking towards anything. If you don't walk towards something, please stop expecting it to get closer. It will not happen. Success is not a magic trick. 
It's a series of steps that people take over and over and over and over. And in spite of what happens, they take those steps anyway. Does it appear to be getting closer? Even though you're not moving towards it, it's probably not. But could that be why you're not getting what you want? Because you ain't moving towards nothing. Last question. Could it be that you just don't want anything more? Maybe that's it. Maybe you don't quit wanting a new car. Maybe you don't quit wanting a bigger house. Maybe you don't quit wanting that second home. Maybe you quit wanting to open up a business. Is it that you just don't want any more? Just answer them these questions. Now let me tell all of y'all something. Put God in your life and it can change all of this. You can go to God and ask God to strengthen you. You can go to God right now and ask God to give you the desires of your heart, but enable you with the character to make them come true. Ask God to strengthen your character. Ask him to strengthen your will. Ask him to strengthen your stick to Ask God for his help. Because God is in to make your dream come true business. Those are my closing remarks. Today. Drop it, baby. Drop it. Those are good. <laughs> Outstanding. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 